Before we get anything started, make sure you preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Good morning, Tiny Tribe. We are on Vlogmas Day 11, and today we're going to be baking some cookies. Woo, finally. <laughs> I gotta tell you, my favorite all-time cookie has got to be a good old classic chocolate chip cookie. We're going to be using the recipe I always use. And this time we're going to be substituting regular chocolate chips with the peppermint crunch to give it that little festive uh, taste and look. If you don't like peppermint, you can just try... There's a ton of different chocolate chips in the baking aisle and you can choose one that's to your liking. Right now they ha even have green chocolate chips. So. Go ahead and choose whichever chocolate chips you like. As always, with any recipe that I share with you, you can always customize it to your liking. That's, like I say, the fun thing about being in the kitchen. You get to experiment with, um, if you don't like something, you can always substitute it with whatever you like because at the end of the day, that recipe is yours. So I'm gonna gather up the ingredients and we're gonna get started. This is where I have all my recipe books and this is the one I use the most. So today we're going to be using a recipe from this William Sonoma cookies baking book. This one I actually found at a thrift store and it was the best find I have ever found <laughs> at a thrift store. And of course this one is the very first recipe oops, <laughs> in the book and it's a really simple recipe that I will be including in the description box but look at that oh yum and here we have all the ingredients we're going to be using today so I just committed a very big mistake <laughs> Uh, here, pro tip, always make sure you have all your ingredients that you need before you get started. I thought I had brown sugar, but it turns out I don't. So, we're going to take a little break and I'm going to run to the store. <laughs> and we're back now. This is the key ingredient missing. So we're going to get started and what I like about this book is that it gives you the recipes. It gives you in cups and teaspoons and all that and in ounces and gram. And for me the most accurate way to bake is by weighing your ingredients because that's a little bit more accurate than doing the cup measurements. But it's going to be off by a little bit. But that's not a problem. If you only have cups, that's okay. Go ahead and use your cups. But I'm going to be using my little handy dandy scale. These are really cheap on Amazon. I think I got this one for less than $14. So, and it's a, a very, a key tool to have in any baking kitchen. We're going to get started. The butter is now at room temperature, so it's perfect to get the recipe started. So we're going to start off by creaming the sugar and the butter. And we're going to start off by weighing 105 grams of brown sugar. If you're measuring out your sugar with by cup, you want to make sure it's nice and packed in there. So like when you're putting it you want to make sure it's packed and it's leveled that way it'll give you the most accurate measurement it's 125 grams of white sugar So here I'm adding one and one third cups of flour or 220 grams. Half 
a teaspoon of baking powder. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. Half a teaspoon of salt. And then I like to grab the whisk and give it a little mix to combine everything all together. And now time for the secret ingredient. Alright guys, so I'm gonna give you my secret ingredient. As you saw, I put a little bit of instant coffee. You can use any instant coffee you have, or even better if you have like um, ground espresso, ground coffee beans, any type of ground coffee that you have. You're gonna add a little teaspoon of that into your chocolate chip cookie recipe and that's gonna make the chocolate flavor pop. Trust me, if you try this, try it with this and you're gonna taste the difference. And that's my little tiny pro tip. As you go, you want to make sure you're scraping down the ingredients that stick on the side of the bowl. That way everything gets incorporated nicely and blends together. I like to crack my egg in a separate little bowl. That way I don't get any eggshells in the mix. At this point, you want to add your teaspoon of vanilla extract. Once the butter and the sugar and the eggs are blended well together, we are going to start adding our dry ingredients. At this point, be careful not to over mix the dough. You don't want tough cookies. So blend until just incorporated. Here I combined a half cup of the peppermint pieces and half cup of this dark cacao chocolate so for a total of one cup of chocolate Toss them in the mixer and give them a quick little spin just to incorporate and then quickly stop. Baking sheet with some parchment paper or butter. I like to use a scoop which makes it 10 times easier to scoop them out. If not, no worries. Use those beautiful two hands of yours. And now, this is the hardest part of the whole entire recipe. The waiting time. It is the longest 12 minutes of my life. <laughs> but we're going to start off with 12 minutes. You always want to start off with a low number because you don't want to burn your cookies. It's better to start off with a low number. That way when you check your cookies at that 12 minute mark, you are able to take a look and see if they need a little bit more time. So it's better to add time than to go past that time and burn it. So yeah, have little checkpoints. That way you can adjust the time accordingly. 
But yeah, we're gonna wait now. <laughs> I'm gonna go heat up some coffee now. <laughs> Ooh, they're looking a little light. So as you can see, they need a little bit more time. We're gonna add three more minutes. Yes, three more minutes. The recipe in the book says 12 minutes, but that's for a smaller size cookie, and I made these a little bit bigger. So of course, they're gonna need a little bit more time. So I added three more minutes for a total of 15 minutes. And we're gonna check to see how they come out in three more minutes. They, can you smell that? <laughs> it's already starting to smell divine. Can you guys smell that? Ah, I like a little golden brown on my cookies. Crackly and beautiful. Now, the second hardest part of this recipe is waiting five whole minutes for them to cool down a little bit so we can give them a little taste. Five minutes begins now. We're taking a break now before we try those cookies. Papa Chico was curious to try the pollo loco tamales. So we're gonna do a first impression. What is this, chicken? Mm-hmm. Pollo, chicken, or gallina? Let's see. Frog. Frog. <laughs> Pretty good. They passed the test. Tan buenos. They're really good. It's like chicken and red salsa. So in the combination, beans, rice, one tamale and chopped chicken mm -hmm. and avocado. <clears throat> That's really good. Papa Chico not have to cook today. <laughs> he took a break today. And he took a cookie. <laughs> Before we can dip into one. He took a cookie. Okay. This is really good. I approve. Papa Chico approves. Yeah. We recommend it. Oh, right. So this is how they came out. <laughs> I think I went a little over with the time because I like my cookies to come out this color. But I think I went over by two minutes because they're a little crispy. But you're a little crunchy. <laughs> I see. Really good. I like the combination of the chocolate and the peppermint. Mm. You can make these this size. Or, I would recommend you making them a little smaller. That way you can do little cookie bags to hand out to your family or friends. And they'll look a little cuter in, in those little bags they have nowadays. The little holiday bags. You can hand them out to as gifts to family and friends. Alright tribe, so that's it for today's recipe. Uh, I hope you guys try this and you have fun baking these. And like I showed you, you can either make them a little festive to give as gifts or keep them plain like this. But I think this looks cute too. You can use any color. I melted some of the peppermint chocolate chips in the microwave for 30 seconds. Just keep an eye on them. Do not burn them. And uh, I drizzled it on the cookie. And I put some colored sugar on there. It's totally customizable. Whatever color sugar you have on hand, 
go ahead and use that you can use sugar sprinkles whatever you want get creative I hope you guys try this recipe and let me know what you think. And I'll see you on the next Vlogmas. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas.